I welcome all of you to the worship service in our Lord Jesus Christ, giving Him in spirit and in truth. I bless all of you to be able to worship Him in truth and, in truth and spirit. Uh, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us a blessed time so that we may be able to gather together to worship you, our Father, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Many countries, including North Korea, China, and Muslim countries and Buddhist countries, in many countries, in many Christians, a lot of Christians doesn't have any freedom to worship you and sing him, you know, praise your name, Lord. But we are living in Los Angeles. If we want, we can worship you anytime. We can praise your name. We can hear your words of God and meditate and proclaim your words until you come. Thank you, Father. When we confess our sins, cleanse our sins inside our hearts through the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of God. Purify our hearts so that our, maybe, so that we maybe, our heart may be good soil today to receive your words and to reap in 104, 64, 34. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, before we hear the sermon, as usual, I am willing to uh, read the book of Psalm, uh, chapter 97, uh, verse 1 through 11. Uh, through this, in our psalm, we can see the sin of the Millennium Kingdom when Jesus Christ, you know, come back to the earth to, you know, reign in the earth. Only King, one King, one Lord, you know, this time, okay? If the Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice. Let a multitude of isos be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. A righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. A fire goes before him and burneth up his enemies around about. His lightning enlightened the world. The earth saw and trembled. The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, they boast themselves of idols, worship him, all you gods. Zion heard and was glad. And the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of thy judgment, O Lord. For thou, Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all the gods. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Who is righteous? This time, these days, to be righteous only one way, to believe in Jesus Christ and receive him as Lord and Savior so that his blood take away our sin from our heart. It's the only way to be righteous. It's called justify. We are not righteous. When we believe in him, God justify us. Because Jesus took all our sins already 2,000 years ago. He took away the sin of the world. Okay. Uh, today's the main scripture for the sermon is Isaiah chapter 8, verse 13 through 15. Only three verses, okay? Isaiah chapter 8, uh, verse 13 to 15. Yeah, let me read for you, okay? Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, 
and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a zin and for a snare to the inhabitation, inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Yeah, who is Isaiah? He's a prophet. You know, he lived um, uh, in Jerusalem uh, 700 years before Jesus Christ came to the earth. In this main scripture, prophet Isaiah prophesied of Jesus Christ to come. He knew God will be manifested in flesh to be a man, to die for our sins. He said, he shall be, Jesus shall be a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to the people of Israel. For they shall not understand who he is, Jesus said unto the Jews, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said unto him, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and will you rear it up in three days? At the time, you know, the temple of Israel, there was no God, no presence of God. A long time ago, Babylon destroyed the temple, all right? And God left Israel because they sinned. There's no temple. But, you know, Jewish people still uh, understood uh, that there is a real temple. But Jesus said, destroy this temple. In three days, I will raise it up. They couldn't see the body of Jesus as the temple, so that Jesus became a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to them, as well as as a gin and snare for them as prophesied by Isaiah. At the time, only Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, was only in the body of Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus, you know, uh, talking about his body as the temple of God. The Jewish people, just, you know, spiritually blinded, they couldn't understand that. You know, Jesus mean, okay, if you kill me, I will rise again for a day. His temple will be restored. They couldn't understand that. Then Jesus went to, to heaven. There's no temple any, uh, you know, even in Israel. Then who is the temple of God? Only someone who has the, the spirit of Jesus Christ within them. The born again Christian is a temple of God. In a church building, it's not temple. The born again Christian is temple of God because they, you know, the Holy Spirit, you know, abide within them. And the psalmist also prophesied of Jesus who shall come, making the same testimony as Isaiah, and said, The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the Kana. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now this means Jesus shall be the most important headstone of the corner for the builder. But the builder shall refuse him, not knowing him. In other words, without him, no one shall be saved for eternal life. But he was refused by the ignorant builder that is, the people of Israel. As you know, all the religions have been trying to seek salvation, refusing Jesus Christ, not knowing only Jesus Christ is the one who gives them salvation of eternal life. 
prophet Isaiah also prophesied of how Jesus shall be dealt by the people of Israel when he come to the world, to the land of Israel. All these prophecies are already, you know, fulfilled 2,000 years ago when Jesus came to the earth. Who has believed, believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Arm of the Lord is what? Jesus is the form of God, okay? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Yeah, he looks very weak. He just born as a son of, you know, a carpenter. His name is Joseph in very small village, you know, Nazareth. And uh, as a root out of a dry ground, he has no form nor calmness, no beauty, right? And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The testament of our peace was upon him. And with these stripes, we are healed. You know, people of Israel thought Jesus Christ has to die because of his sin, even though he died for our sins. You know that? He received, you know, he was, you know, scourged all his back, you know. It's just like, you know, just like a field you know, having kind of stripes. All, uh, all blood coming out of that from the wound, okay? But they thought Jesus died for his sin. What a foolish, you know, people of Israel they were. Same thing's happening these days. Not many people really understand why Jesus Christ died on the cross 2,000 years ago. Just for you, not somebody else, you know? For you, today, you you, each one of you, presented in this service. As prophesied by the prophets, he appeared the earth in the name of Jesus, and he testified of himself that he is the very one that was prophesied by the prophets. You know, Jesus said to the people of Israel, because they were so foolish, okay? Even though the God, you know, stood before, before them, they, they couldn't understand who he was. Now listen very carefully how Jesus Christ spoke to them. Did you never read in the scriptures? So that means Jesus, you know, asked them, you have not read, you know, the prophecy said by Isaiah? You never read the scriptures. She says the same thing. You know, Christians never read the Bible, study the Bible in depth, okay? They only come to, comes to church on Sunday, only hear the sermon, even, even though not for you know, Bible study, you know. Have you read? Jesus asking them, did you ever, did you never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected. The same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Jesus talking about the churches, okay, who believe in him, to be born again, Holy Spirit, to be church of God. The Jewish people at the time couldn't be the member of a church because they didn't believe in Jesus Christ. It is our blessing. You know, so the given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits there means what? The church of God is a very specific, peculiar nation. 
peculiar nation. Bible says. Okay, and uh, whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it shall, it will grind him to powder. Now, pieces to powders. Yeah, that means, you know, they that didn't believe in Jesus Christ, you know, they shall be judged, okay? And also, when Jesus come back to the earth, says, you know, King of kings, a lot of those, you know, whosoever not believe in him, the rock that is Jesus Christ, you know, fall upon them, they shall be grinded to powder. Yeah, that's why today is the day for salvation. Don't post upon. Upon hearing from Jesus, the chief priests and Pharisees perceived that he spoke of them. They knew that. And they sought to lay hands on him to arrest him. But they feared the multitude. They couldn't do that because they took him for a prophet. In the multitude of Israel, you know, thought Jesus is a prophet, even though they didn't, they didn't know he's God. At least as a, as a prophet, they understood him. They knew that they are the ones that fall on the stone to be broken and to be grinded to powder when he, the rock fall upon them in the future. They shall be judged as a stone to be grinded to powder upon the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, prophet Daniel, you know, different prophet, okay? Daniel uh, testified of the Lord Jesus Christ unto the king of Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. Yeah, Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar was a very famous, great king at the time. He, he was called the king of kings a lot of laws. Babylon at the time. The Babylon is much more powerful than the United States these days. It was the first kingdom as a living rock when he judged the kingdom of the world upon coming again. And Daniel explained about Jesus Christ coming king of kings, a lot of laws in the future. He said this, And in the days of three kings, are these kings shall as the God of heaven set up a kingdom. That means in his great relation, the Antichrist, you know, will raise a ten kings. And that means in the, in the middle of the tri tribulation, uh, God of heaven set up a, a kingdom for Jesus Christ. We shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break it in pieces, the iron, and the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, and the great God hath made it known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof. Of sure. In the the gold means, you know, the kingdom of Babylon. The silver means the kingdom of Media and Persia. The brass means, you know, the kingdom of Greece. You remember the great, you know, Alexander? Yeah. And the clay and iron is what? You know, ten kingdom shall be mixed with, you know, clay and iron. Some, is, some are weak, some are strong. What shall come to pass thereafter? Uh, the vision that was shown to Daniel was the fulfillment of that Jesus said unto the Jews, saying, On whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Yeah, when King Nebuchadnezzar saw a great image in his dream, it was made of gold, you know, head was made of gold, you know, and two arms and, uh, you know, brass and made of silver and a belly and, you know, 
thighs made of, you know, bronze, and two, two legs made of iron, and a feet, you know, ten, ten feet, ten, ten toes, you know, some, some is made of clay, some is made of iron. It is from Babylon to uh, these days, okay? After rapture, there will be great tribulation. Only ten kingdoms shall exist for a moment under the rule of Antichrist. Then was the iron, the clay, and the brass, and silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like a chaff of the summer threshing floor. And the wind carried them away. Then no place was found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. That means that all the kingdom and nations in human history shall you know, swept away when Jesus come. They, don't, they didn't believe in Jesus. That's why Jesus will, you know, judge them all. The Bible talking about to, to just build this kingdom, making Jesus Christ himself as the only king of kings and lot of laws, sooner or later. The Lord God prophesied through Daniel of the Millennium Kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, making all the nations under his kingdom. And when he came to the world to judge as a king of kings and lot of laws, Apostle John testified of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ coming at the end of the Great Tribulation. That means after we rapture. Listen very carefully. And the seventh angel sounded. Seventh angel means, you know, end of, end of tribulation. Seven years tribulation. The seventh means, you know, seventh year of tribulation. End of tribulation. And there was great voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of this world, the kingdoms of this world, are become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God. Yet they are in the throne of God in heaven saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord, God Almighty, which art and washed and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and the wrath is come. Thy wrath is come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them, which destroy the earth. Yeah, in human history, all the nations, people have been trying their best to destroy the earth, pollute the earth with the sin and with all trashes, all kind of chemical weapons, all kind of things, you know that, as you know that. That's why he should destroy them that destroy the earth. Even they, you know, defile the moon and mar, bringing kind of, you know, you know, tresses in there. They're not supposed to be there until Jesus come. Apostle Peter testified of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the living stone that shall smite the image and smite image, that means smite all the nation's people, and fill the earth. He testified in the spirit of them that shall fill the earth with Jesus Christ. Listen to this. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of man, but chosen of God, and precious, you also, as lively stones, Jesus Christ is called the rock or stone. Living stone is living. All the living stone 
are built upon the spiritual house on holy priesthood to offer up the spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. You know, church of God, this church, okay? The head of this church is Jesus. That's why he's called headstone of Connor, of the cornerstone, okay? Of the corner. He is a living stone. He is a living God. That's why the members of the church of God, all right, should be every one of them living stone. That means has to be born again of the Holy Spirit. Unless somebody born again, Holy Spirit, they cannot be the member of God. They belong to the world, belong to the devil, unfortunately. Yes, you must have born again. Jesus said, except a man born again cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man born of the water, from your mother, right? Water and, and the Holy Spirit cannot enter the kingdom of God. You cannot go to heaven, see? Examine yourself whether Christ Jesus is in you. Wherefore also it contained in the scriptures, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believes on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner and a stone of stumbling. Uh, people don't believe in Jesus, they stumble. They stumble, you know, and fall down. And the rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, there unto also they were appointed. But you are a chosen generation. He's talking to Christian, okay? Church of God, born again Christian. A royal priesthood as a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show, show forth the praise of him who has called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Whatsoever received eternal life from Jesus Christ as to show, you know, declare, The goodness, praise of him. Unfortunately, not many people born again these days. Yeah, Apostle Peter testified that the members of the Church of God that are born of the Spirit shall be changed as the Lord Jesus, that is the living stone, and they shall fill the whole earth and reign with Christ as a joint heir in the earth. You remember at the time of Noah? Except that Noah's family all died with the flood. No one else. Because they didn't believe in God. Same thing happening. You know that? That's why Jesus said, when come I come again, exactly at the same time as Noah. Until Noah you know, went into the you know, ark. People so busy to, you know, eat and drink, you know, and married to getting married with, okay? The same thing's happening. So busy for these things, right? Even though sooner or later he's coming back. Yeah, there's a very important truth in uh, the midst of the words given today. That is of uh, the headstone and the cornerstone. The scripture testified that our Lord Jesus Christ is a headstone as well as a cornerstone that was refused by the builder. Yes, still refused by the builder. There is only one of which headstone is at the same time a cornerstone. You know what it is? It is pyramid only. Pyramid, right? In Egypt, right? Pyramid. The headstone that is laid on the top of a pyramid has five dimensions of triangle, and it is supposed to lay it on the top of pyramid in the final stage of building pyramid. 
then the headstone shall be the cornerstone as well. The scriptures testified of our Lord Jesus Christ as a headstone of the corner. The pyramid shall be building completely when the Lord Jesus Christ come to judge the world. But the Antichrist has been deceiving the world himself to be the headstone of the corner. Such a consp uh, conspiracy, conspiracy is hidden in one U.S. dollar. So you can take a U.S. dollar, one dollar, okay? Take a look. You will see pyramid. As we know, the final headstone is above the pyramid, right? And one eye, let's see the whole world and within the headstone. This one eye is a symbol of the new world order that is deceiving the world, saying the new one world government shall make Antichrist headstone of the cornerstone to complete the pyramid. That means, you know, let the Antichrist rule over the world. But it is a dream in vain. But when the Lord Jesus Christ come, he will cast the Antichrist into the lake of fire together with the first prophet that seduced the world to help the Antichrist. Apostle John testified of the sin in the spirit. And I saw the beast. That means that is Antichrist. Antichrist is the devil manifested in flesh. Christ is God manifested in flesh. Antichrist is a manifestation of the devil in flesh. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him. They sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with them the first prophet that wrought mir uh, miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that set up upon the horse, of which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. You know, sword out of the mouth of Jesus is not kind of a full sword, it's made of steel, no. The word, sword of the word, you know, whatever Jesus say, it will be done. If Jesus said, you must all die, they shall be dead at the moment. When Jesus Christ created all things in the earth, let, let there be light. That the light was. Even suns and moons and stars, whenever he said, let them be. All those things were in the sword of the Lord. You know, the words of God, just like the sword of the Lord. If you believe, you just, you know, obey the words of God, you will see real miracle. See the power of, you know, Almighty God. Unfortunately, not many people, you know, believe in the words of God and obey them. Yes, the Satan, that is the prince of the world, has been deceiving the world beginning from the Jews to all the nations for 6,000 years to reign in the world forever. Satan has been using his servants to eliminate the Lord Jesus Christ that is a headstone of the corner for him to occupy the whole world. Satan also is to be in flesh as Jesus Christ, but he shall fall failed to be the headstone of the corner, after all, to be cut out from the pyramid to be cast into the lake of fire. Therefore, the believer of the Lord Jesus Christ is the one that believes his kingdom come to the earth. Whosoever not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ shall be ended up with believing in the other Christ, that is called Antichrist, and to be judged eternally with him. Today is the day when we make our resolution whether we believe in the new world order that shall be done through the Lord Jesus Christ or the other one world order through Illuminati, Freemason, 
sponsored by Satan. There is no one choice, either one of them. Children, you have to know this, okay? You have to know this because it shall come to pass pretty soon. All the words of God has been fulfilled and should, shall be fulfilled completely. All right? So God bless you to understand his word, his prophecy, and so that you may be able to behave yourself. What kind of life you have to have in the future? For what you're going to leave? Why you go to school? For what? To satisfy your lust of flesh? Lost of eyes? Prize of life? No. All these things shall be in vain. All the things, you know, for the Lord is not in vain. Heavenly Father, bless them, Lord, so they understand all your words. Give them wisdom and understanding so that giving them ear to hear, eyes to see, so that so that they may be able to see what is coming, your kingdom. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.